Everyone deserves a home. Everyone deserves and has a right to a place on this planet. Everyone has a right to live in security and justice with a future for their children. This is uh, the vision, these are the values that underlie our campaign of house rebuilding. Shalom, shalom, shalom. I'm uh, Jeff Halper, the uh, coordinator of the Israeli Committee Against House Demolitions. Um, originally from the States, as you can hear, from Minnesota. But I've lived in Israel now for more than 30 years. Uh, married with kids. Um, uh, I've done my Israeli experience and so on. And I'm a professor of anthropology uh, who, over many years, has been involved in the peace movement but over the last five or six years has been very involved with the whole issue of rebuilding demolished houses and resisting the occupation on the ground. But over the years, the Israeli peace movement has always set its own agenda for peace. We decided that we wanted to go out and ask the Palestinians how they thought we could be most effective in supporting their struggle for, for independence. And uh, one of the issues that the Palestinians suggested that was a a very painful issue for the average person was house demolitions. The occupation is very abstract, especially for people far away, but for Israelis as well. You know, closure and land and, and so on. With the house demolition issue, it's very concrete. You have a family, you have a story, you have bulldozers coming, you have soldiers that are there. And then that gives us the opportunity to raise the questions, why are they demolishing this house? What is the policy? What is the meaning of the occupation? So our resistance is that we get in front of bulldozers to try to stop uh, the demolitions. And when houses are demolished, if families are willing, because we bring hundreds of Israelis out and rebuild the houses. And so it's a joint Israeli-Palestinian act of resistance, act of solidarity, something I think both sides find very meaningful. And that's our expression of civil disobedience in terms of fighting the occupation. The Arabic word for home is maskin. Maskin comes from the word sakina. Sakina means peace and solitude and quietness and uh, it's a place of peace for people. So when that is destroyed, it really affects all their uh, livelihood in many ways, not just how they function and uh, prepare their meals and sleep and so on. It's also a place where they can have peace and have protection. You know, we talk about a fundamental human right for shelter but that doesn't begin to really address what a home really means. And the idea that a state will come in and deny the people that, that ability to have that intimate space and will destroy it in a very violent, cruel way with all the trauma 
that that involves for people is a terrible thing. And the fact that then you add to that whole thing, of course, that many of the people we're talking about, whether it's Salim Shawamre and Anatta, whose house was demolished by court order, or the people in Janine, whose houses were demolished uh, in, a, in a military sense, these are all refugees. And then to go and, in a sense, not only not acknowledge that, but to then go and destroy their other refuge. The occupation is not only an Israeli occupation. It's an occupation that is um, financed, that's made politically possible, that's supported materially in weapons and so on by the United States. Uh, and um, the houses are demolished using American equipment. In a sense, it's, um, it's an American-Israeli occupation. I think the responsibility for, um, for rebuilding, for making amends, uh, for um, trying to strive for justice, for contrition, is, uh, is just as American as it is Israeli. Part of what we try to do maybe in our rebuilding is to try to tell the Palestinians that we recognize not just your suffering, not just your rights, but we recognize you as, as integral people here that have a right to be here and should be here, and we acknowledge that. And uh, that, I think, if there's anything that will be eventually a basis for reconciliation, eventually, uh, it will be something like that. I think it's um, uh, the building uh, aspect of it is very, very important because I feel if you want to do something that is everlasting, you build in societies. It's the opposite of destroying. So whether it's in values or building houses or uh, so on, we have this positive uh, attitude to life, which is to build societies to transform them into something that is uh, constructive rather than destructive. צו הריסה ביום שישי בבוקר, יום ראשון באו צילמו גם את הבית, יום שני על הבוקר באו הרסו, אפילו, אפילו 24 שעות לא נתנו לנו, <אח> ללכת למת, לבית משפט לא נתנו לנו, הרסו לנו את החיים שלנו, מה לעשות אנחנו לא, לא יודעים מה לעשות, אני לא, אין לי איפה ללכת. See, one of the problems of the Shuafat camp, why they're on the, uh, they're targeted by the Israeli authorities, is because they separate between Pisgat Ze'ev and French Hill. So they break the territorial contiguity that Israel wants to, to put its settlements and neighborhoods together. Well, as we know of at least 20 homes in, throughout East Jerusalem, and many of them here in Shuafat, that are in immediate danger. And the worst of all, of course, is the inability of people to get building permits in order to build. So people are living in inadequate conditions, overcrowded, uh, and not able, not able to build. So you might have... Uh, 20 or 30 people living in a house together. The whole system of, of the bureaucratic oppression, using the civil administration or using the municipality of Jerusalem to issue demolition orders, thousands of demolition orders against families, using the courts, using planning, using zoning, using the whole legal system in a very cynical way in order to achieve political goals. And the political goal is to limit Palestinians to little tiny islands within Jerusalem and the West Bank and Gaza um, so that Israel controls most of the territory. And the bottom line is to create conditions so difficult that the Palestinians will leave the country. 
we are, what, what we are doing today is some kind of a resist to occupation. With the help of you, with the help of anybody who want to help us resisting the occupation to live in peace and in real peace, in a just peace. We're showing the people of this refugee camp that we support their efforts in resisting the occupation and that one day we hope to live side by side with our Palestinian neighbors. Here to say, uh, at this time when the whole world and many Israelis are saying enough, when the United States has asked explicitly that, that home demolitions be stopped, uh, given everything that's happening in the world, Isn't it's it? time to stop. We need to, to be like anybody in the world, to live in a home. In Israel, one has to be optimistic. Otherwise, there's no reason for being here. If we can't help a little bit and translate that optimism into a little bit of action, then we're defeated. And all of us here refuse to be defeated. I think it was a very good action. And you can see what's nice here also is that it's a natural kind of thing. We work together, it's not artificial, it's not forced. People come, uh, the kids speak Hebrew in the camp, uh, they're happy to have Israelis. Israelis come and they're happy to do something meaningful. And uh, it's a good feeling, you know, it's, it's political. It isn't just holding hands and being nice to each other. It's very political, but at the same time, it's very human. And it shows that uh, all this talk about they hate us and uh, there'll never be peace and all that, it crumbles in about a minute when you come in an atmosphere of peace and uh, working together and solidarity. Uh, there's no problem whatsoever of Israelis and Palestinians living together. Our main partner all these years uh, has been the Palestinian Land Defense Committee. Uh, it's a Palestinian grassroots organization uh, that has committees in villages and cities all through the occupied territories. In other words, it's a way in which Palestinian localities, instead of being isolated, each one facing the occupation by itself, link together, there's a flow of information, there's a flow of support, and so on. So it's a very it's a very democratic organization, very grassroots, very much in touch with the people. And uh, for us as Israelis, it's it's great because um, not only is it a partner that's rooted in the in the community, but they're very sensitive to what's happening in the community. Uh, they're the ones that go out and explain to the people, for example, why in the hell Israelis want to come in and build houses. Um, what the point of it all is. They sometimes explain to families, don't get your expectations up because the houses could be demolished again. They understand the political um, goal and struggle that we're both involved in and they help to, to translate that to the people on the ground and create conditions by which we can come in and build, build together. The house rebuilding is a very significant peacemaking uh, vehicle because it isn't that you give money and somebody goes to build a house for you or it isn't that you go out for an hour and you put a brick on a brick and then go home but house them house rebuilding it uh, takes weeks sometimes now often we don't build during the week because the army will come in and demolish so we have a window Fridays and Saturdays so every Friday and Saturday uh, for weeks sometimes dozens or hundreds of Israelis join Palestinians to rebuild the house. Uh, and, um, you know, we eat together, uh, tea is served, the kids come out, and these are kids that have only seen Israelis as soldiers, that are very traumatized by, by Israelis, very scared of Israelis in many, in many cases. Uh, many women participate in our activities, uh, most of the people in our committee are, are women 
And there's a special bonding and a special solidarity and support, I think, that comes out of that as well for the, for the women. Because often the women in these things are shunted aside, the Palestinian women, and they're not able to, to tell people, especially men, what they've gone through. They're not able, the trauma is very deep. And so the fact that there are Israeli women there, and then there are other Palestinian women that come out, and they're able to share and to a little bit get the trauma out and the, and, the, and the hurt out and so on, is very, it's a healing process as well as a peacemaking process. And also with the men, you know, the fact that the men feel that now they have a purpose again. They're, they're heads of the family, they can provide a shelter, they're doing something active. So that even if the house is demolished again, the feeling that, okay, I was active and, I, and now I'm going to rebuild it again. It's a way for a man to reclaim his own self-esteem instead of just de accepting defeat and going and trying to find a place for his family somewhere. So in all kinds of levels with the, with the men, the women and the children, it's very much of a healing uh, experience, I think, a peacemaking experience because we do it together. And for Israelis it's very important because Israelis don't have many opportunities themselves to go into the, into the occupied territories, to meet Palestinians, and certainly to resist. Obviously a campaign to rebuild houses cannot be founded only on values and, uh, and rights and, uh, and politics. We need the resources in order to do this. But every dollar makes a difference uh, because uh, it's only if we can actually go out and rebuild the houses, which costs money, can we put into a concrete expression our resistance to the occupation? And I think that if, if, if there'll be any spark upon which reconciliation later on can, uh, can be built on, it will be, it will be that spark that you know, we're keeping alive by these activities.